Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an interesting new knife console for you. In front of us is the Prometheus Design Works Invictus Auto. This is the uh, military law enforcement automatic knife that they released a couple of years ago. Uh, and actually this knife comes to me by way of Jim Skelton. For those of you who follow my channel, I can almost assure that you guys are also following Mr. Skelton. Jim is one of the godfathers of the YouTube knife world, and he did a great video on this actually a couple of years ago. So this is not a new knife at all. Uh, and he did a great job of explaining the history and the design and, and a bit more about this knife than I'll really be able to in one of my videos. So I'll reference that, but I want to sort of use this uh, as a preview, and it's interesting that this knife is getting into my hands at this point. This is actually on its way to Greece to my good buddy Nico at Today's Grail Tomorrow's Beater. Um, but Prometheus Design Works just announced that they are releasing a new version of this exact knife uh, in a more affordable trim. So it's very interesting that it's coming to me at this time. The differences are that that model has flat aluminum handle scales as opposed to these contoured ones with an edge chamfer around here and it's a bit more of a simpler handle design but the materials and the fit and finish and everything will be the same except this one costs $390 which is quite expensive and the new one is just $275. So head over to PrometheusDesignWorks.com and you can see what I'm talking about. Let's take a little bit closer look at this knife as it's more or less the same as the one that's coming out. We'll look at some objective in, uh, information here. Uh, the blade itself is coming in at right at about 3.75 inches with about 3.1 inches of overall cutting length. Uh, the overall length you're looking right at, uh, you're looking at maybe about eight and a quarter inches right there and the handle length is coming in at four and three quarters inches. The grip area, if you include the forward finger choil, is five and a quarter inches. If you include it back to this first choil, you're looking at about 4.1 inches. Um, I do appreciate having a forward finger choil for uh, different uh, grips as needed. So the width on this knife is coming in at exactly half an inch right there, so quite nice. Uh, and the blade stock is a trim 0.125 inches. So uh, that's nice in this sort of overbuilt uh, folder world right now to have a knife that is uh, reasonably sized with a, a thinner blade stock like that. The overall weight is coming in at 3.76 ounces. So really not that bad, a nice lightweight full-size automatic carry knife right here with a reasonable blade shape and a very nice build quality. So let's uh, pull out a couple of other knives to compare this to. For the first time in my channel, we're going to compare this to the Spyderco Delica. Yep, I'm totally copying other people. I'm also copying Jim Skelton with my carbon fiber background. Why don't I just pull out these Delicas? Oh, the Delica, and here's an Endura. This is actually an older set of knives, also headed over to Nico. So what you can see is this knife actually falls in between the sizes of the Delica and the Endura right there. I'll bring out another couple of common knives that people know about. How about another Spyderco, the uh, Standby Paramilitary 2, and a full-size Chris Reeve Large Inkosi. So it's about the same size as the Inkosi or Sebenza, and a little bit smaller overall than a Paramilitary 2. So a full-size knife going on right here. Let's break it down anatomically. Up front is a beautifully done saber ground blade of CPM 154 steel. I have had nothing but good experiences with CPM 154. It's not the highest end steel in the world, but it has a good amount of edge retention and corrosion resistance. Good enough for me. Uh, I, I, this one is a couple of years old and has, has absolutely no wear on it. I know Jim takes good care of his knives. But, uh, you know, that says something. In two or so years, there's no uh, corrosion of any kind or even loss of luster on that beautiful stonewash finish. It's really a mirror stonewash finish. Very similar uh, to even my Peter Rosenti Satori, uh, not Satori, the Nirvana. My Satori also had that finish. Uh, very bright uh, mirror stonewash on this one. This one has a little bit heavier stonewash. Very, very, very nicely done. That's one of my favorite finishes. It hides wear very well and it keeps the steel very slick. So when you're slicing through something, there's even less friction. Uh, 
This has a nice top swedge and a very characteristic fuller down the middle of the blade. The designer of this knife uh, certainly had his hands in some other projects out there, so this knife may look familiar and similar to some other companies out there, uh, and that's because it's got the same designer. Now go and watch Jim's video for a little bit more information on that situation. There's some jimping up top that's actually very functional. It's not uncomfortable to use and provides excellent traction. There is a forward finger choil that while it sacrifices a little bit of blade length right there, allows you to choke up and then place your thumb right there on the back of the blade for some nice fine work. I could imagine doing some feathering some wood or something like that, doing some whittling like that if you needed to, uh, if you were out camping or if you were, you know, using this in the, in the military or something, absolutely. Uh, moving back to the pivot, this is obviously an automatic deployment here. I believe it runs on washers on the inside. The deployment is very strong and very fast. And the uh, retracting it into the blade is quite smooth and quite easy. Uh, you will have to do, uh, you will have to really keep the tension the whole time because the spring will return the knife to a fully open position no matter where you leave it. So I could see that as actually a safety feature. Some knives will stop like here and could get stuck halfway open. This one will never be anything but opened or closed. And so that's pretty neat right there. When you disengage the button lock, you can close it right there. There is a safety on the uh, handle itself that works in both the closed position to prevent you from depressing the button in any way, but it also opens in the open position, almost like that CRKT lock system, so there's no way to disengage the lock in the open position either. Quite an interesting feature right there. I think that it will help some people who are afraid of deploying these things in their pocket to not feel scared to carry it. I will say that this button is recessed into this handle and is already flush, and so it's unlikely that something will push on it, and you actually really have to push it all the way. I can sit here and push on it gently with my thumb fairly directly, and it's going nowhere until I depress it all the way. Uh, it won't open, and so that's quite nice. But that safety is also very conveniently located right underneath the uh, button lock right there, and so it's you're not fidgeting around trying to reach somewhere else to try to make that turn on and off. Now, an interesting thing about this knife, if you haven't noticed, is that the button is actually made of some uh, glow material, so I'm just gonna brighten it up. I'm in the middle of the day, so it's gonna be hard for me to make the room dark, but I can show you that that is actually glowing right there uh, and so it is quite bright at night. That's a nice little feature right there. Help you find your knife in the dark. Very cool. Moving back to the handles. This is 6061T6 aluminum, the aircraft grade good stuff. Uh, and it is beautifully finished, honestly. I think that a lot of people get bent out of shape when we talk about aluminum and knives. Because aluminum is not as expensive. But it is if you use the very best materials and it looks beautiful if you machine it the right way. And when it's done well, what is there to complain about? It's a strong metal. It's gonna be plenty strong enough for the uses that we're gonna use this for. Um, and it keeps the cost down. This knife would only be more expensive if it didn't have an aluminum handle. So uh, what have they done here? They've done a nice 3D contoured handle of the aluminum right there. You can see how it reflects the light right there. Beautifully, beautifully done, extremely comfortable in the hand, smooth all over the place. It's got these nicely milled lines right here. Uh, the button and everything are beautifully recessed in there. The uh, lock and safety lock right there, the safety mechanism. The uh, reverse of the pivot is a beautifully milled piece right there. Um, and then you have a very nice deep carry pocket clip. This one works beautifully. The spring is just right. It uh, has a nice ramp to it. It's nice and tall, and it's easy to get in and out of the pocket because it has this hole in it right here. So easy to pull that right out without extra tension. It has a little bit of some ridges, or you could call it jimping on the back here. That is quite comfortable uh, in the hand. It keeps it locked in your hand quite well. And there's an integrated lanyard hole on the back right there. So a very clean design overall. Ergonomically, the hand fill, uh, this fills the hand very, very nicely in the regular position, and again, you can choke up on it, and there are no hot spots anywhere. This is a very, very comfortable knife. The flat grind on the blade is quite high, so it slices pretty nicely 
for this blade profile. Honestly, I'm very impressed with the quality and precision and the beauty of this knife. It is a very well-made out-the-side automatic, and it's definitely worth giving a look to. If you're in the market for a nice out-the-side automatic right now, go check out PrometheusDesignWorks.com. They've got a $275 version of this for sale right now, the Invictus. So thank you guys for watching. Leave some comments down below about what you think. Click like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, take care, guys.